Welcome back, everyone. In this episode of Duty and Valor, you'll hear the story of a man who fell in love with flying at an early age. A man whose military service was in question during the Great Depression. A man who was the only American to achieve five or more aerial victories in a day on two separate occasions. This is the story of Medal of Honor recipient U.S. Navy Captain David McCampbell. David was born on January 16, 1910 in Bessemer, Alabama to parents Andrew and Elizabeth McCampbell. His family eventually moved to West Palm Beach, Florida when he was 10. Around this time, David's grandfather bought a surplus World War I Curtis Jenny and took him along on many flights, where his love for flying began. He attended high school at Staunton Military Academy in Virginia. He was an accomplished swimmer and after graduating, he majored in engineering at Georgia Tech. He was only there for one year when his father had to close the family's furniture store in Florida due to the impact of the Great Depression. Not wanting to burden his family financially for his college costs, David applied to and was selected to attend the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, and he went on to graduate in 1933 with a degree in marine engineering. The timing of his graduation was not good for his naval career. With the nation still suffering from the impacts of the Great Depression, he wasn't offered a commission as an officer. The Navy didn't have the funding to take on all new Academy graduates. They only offered half of the graduating class a commission, and the other half were honorably discharged. He then tried to join the Army as a pilot, but was turned down due to his eyesight. David then took on construction and manufacturing jobs to make ends meet before receiving a commission in the Navy Reserve as an ensign the following year. His first duty assignment was aboard the USS Portland from June 1934 to 1937. After meeting the two years at sea requirement, he applied for and was accepted for flight training at Naval Air Station Pensacola, and he officially became a naval aviator in April 1938 when he received his wings of gold. David was then assigned to the aircraft carrier USS Ranger where he was a landing signal officer, or LSO. LSOs are aviators who use hand signals to guide landing aircraft safely onto the deck of a carrier. In May of 1940, he was then transferred to the USS Wasp and served as an LSO there as well. He remained on the USS Wasp until September 15, 1942. On that day, he was walking across the flight deck in the early afternoon when the Wasp was struck by three of six torpedoes fired from the Japanese submarine I-19. The Wasp eventually sank, but luckily after four hours at sea, David was one of the 1,946 survivors that were rescued by the cruisers Helena and Salt Lake. He then returned to Florida where he was promoted to Lieutenant Commander and served as an LSO instructor at Naval Air Station Melbourne. In September 1943, he became the commanding officer of Fighter Squadron 15, known as the Fabled 15 and early the following year, he was promoted to commander of the entire Air Group 15 aboard the aircraft carrier USS Essex. In April of that year, the Essex entered the combat zone in the Pacific, and the Air Group began flying combat missions. The following month, David was promoted to commander. On June 19, 1944, Commander McCampbell, who was flying his F-6F Hellcat, shot down five Yakuska Judy dive bombers during the Battle of the Philippine Sea. This battle was given the nickname of the Great Marianas Turkey Shoe as the U.S. downed a disproportionate number of Japanese aircraft compared to what they had lost. With the five planes shot down, he earned the title of Ace in a Day, which is given to a pilot who has five aerial victories in one day. But Commander McCampbell wasn't done. Later that day, he went out on a second sortie and he downed two more Japanese aircraft, both A6M Zeeks. A few months later, on October 24, 1944, the Essex was in support of the Battle of Leyte Gulf when Commander McCampbell became a legend. Radar picked up a large number of Japanese aircraft flying in the direction of the battle group. As they had to scramble quickly, Commander McCampbell's Hellcat was only partially fueled when he took off, along with six other fighter aircraft. 
Once in the air, he gave the order for five of the pilots to attack the 20 incoming bombers, while he and wingman Ensign Roy Rushing flew towards the 40 Japanese fighter aircraft that were in support of the attack. During the ensuing 90-minute battle, Ensign Rushing shot down six enemy aircraft and McCampbell shot down nine more. These nine aerial victories gave him the distinction of being the only American to achieve ace in a day twice. It also set the American single mission aerial victory record. The actions of the seven Navy aviators disrupted the Japanese attack. No enemy aircraft made it close enough to attack the fleet and the surviving Japanese aircraft abandoned their mission. When Commander McCampbell returned to the Essex, he observed that the flight deck was full of planes and it would take them at least 20 minutes to clear them so he could land. However, he was extremely low on fuel and didn't have that much time. He flew to another aircraft carrier, the USS Langley, to attempt to land. He was able to put his Hellcat down just as the engine sputtered to a stop as it was now completely out of fuel. The crew of the Langley had to push the aircraft out of the landing area as it had no power of its own. In his own words, Commander McCampbell said that the mechanic that rearmed the plane told him that there were exactly six rounds left in the starboard gun, and they were all jammed. But it worked out alright. It's amazing to think that with only a few rounds left and landing as his plane consumed the last of his fuel, Commander McCampbell might not have survived if he faced just one more enemy aircraft or had to fly just minutes longer. Commander McCampbell returned to the U.S. as the Navy's ace of aces and the Navy's all-time leading ace with a total of 34 enemy aircraft shot down during the war. The 34 victories placed him behind only U.S. Army Air Force Majors Richard Bong and Thomas McGuire as the top aces of World War II. For his actions on June 19th and October 24th, 1944, Commander David McCampbell was awarded the Medal of Honor. On January 10, 1945, at a ceremony at the White House, President Roosevelt handed the medal to his mother, who then pinned it upon her son. In addition to the Medal of Honor, he also earned the Navy Cross, the Silver Star, Legion of Merit with V device for Valor, the Distinguished Flying Cross, and the Air Medal, among many. He went on to serve in various positions in the Navy until he retired in July 1964 at the rank of Captain. He returned to the Palm Beach area and passed away on June 30, 1996 at the Veteran Affairs Nursing Home in Riviera Beach, Florida, and he was interred at the Arlington National Cemetery. Captain David McCampbell's heroism in the skies during World War II serves as an enduring source of inspiration. His unwavering courage, unmatched aerial combat skills, and relentless dedication to defending his comrades and his country embody the very essence of heroism and his legacy continues as a symbol of bravery. Thank you for listening to this episode of Duty and Valor. If you'd like to delve deeper into the remarkable life of Captain David McCampbell, you can find all of the sources used for today's episode in our show notes and on our website, dutyandvalor.com. We greatly appreciate your support, so please take a moment to follow and review us wherever you're listening, as your feedback means the world to us. And make sure to join us for our next episode where we'll be sharing the remarkable story of another American hero.